Uh, before we get into chapter three, any questions or comments about the psychological aspect of doing business in China? No, it just okay. makes sense. It's like a total, total power and strength. You know, silence is power kind of thing, and just learning to settle into that and be okay. Yeah, it's it's just a different way of talking about emotional intelligence.、Um, whenever I hear a Westerner get frustrated <laughs> because their Chinese people can't answer a yes no question, well, that's them losing their emotional intelligence. They don't understand that it's a strategy to get you to say more, whether they do it consciously or something. All right, I'm gonna. I have some things to announce at the end, so we we spend a lot of time. So I'm going to try to go over this relatively quickly. Okay, so chapter three、uh, is the different shades of gray, and the practical definition is that we want to understand that Chinese instinctively instinctively feel that there are opposing forces. That's why they always talk about balance and harmony. They want to bring things into balance and harmony. Opposing forces, but in that balance or in that harmony, what is the li yi? What is the advantage to the Chinese person? So, what they do is they instinctively feel these opposing forces. They try to seek balance, but in that balance is where they find the gray areas in which to operate. So, instinctively feel is. Normally, I would ask you guys what the Chinese is, but I'm going to try to go through this a little bit faster so we can get the Q and A.、Uh, instinctively, feel is 直觉 which is their perception or consciousness, or 直觉 which is a person's intuition. Chinese people just kind of intuitively will find these gray areas to operate. To to them, it's just intuitive. It's not something that they deliberately do. It's just natural and intuitive. Gray area. What is the Angela? What is the Chinese word for gray area? Yeah. Well, that's it. Wait. It's just gray. Wait. So you can put gray in front of anything. Okay.、Uh, another one could be 模糊 Okay. Or vague. All right. Hui is the literal translation for gray, but 模糊 is the actual symptom of thinking with a gray. Way mindset. Exactly, and Chinese people are the most comfortable in a gray area, which is frustrating for Westerners because Westerners generally want, well, is it yes or is it no? <laughs> and Chinese people like to just operate in the gray areas because it gives it gives everybody more flexibility, but specifically, it gives them. More flexibility, where they've been conditioned that they don't want to be blamed for something. So, and this is again where an art of war tactic is to be tactically vague or intentionally vague. Sometimes, when you're negotiating with Chinese people, if you can condition your psychology to just not answer a question directly, but answer it with a very vague answer, that actually creates advantages in China.、Uh, and, And you can only gain that through experience and through understanding the examples. All right. There's always pros and cons to being vague,、uh, and that's one of the things that we want to do. Ultimately, it all comes down to Chinese pragmatism. And when you're doing business in China, the Western media, mainstream media, and the Western mind, we have a lot of negative perceptions of Chinese business people. And we try to put things into a Western context where we have these very strong institutions, very strong legal system.、Um, you know, there's certain things that you can and cannot do, or you're going to be arrested or punished. Well, in China, some of the behaviors that we frown upon are not punished. Punished, and not only are they not punished, they're not frowned upon. By the society at large, and that is the context that we're dealing.、Um, Chinese pragmatism is also translated as xianci, and you'll hear that word a lot when we talk about the way that Chinese people make decisions. It's just like 非常非常的现实 There's male. There's. It's almost like no. It's almost like 
friendship is not important. Love is not important.、Uh, even love. If anybody is, if you're dating an intercultural dating, you're dating a Chinese girl or a Chinese guy. The relationship is based on a, a different definition of love. But if you're going to get married, it's based on some kind of exchange where it's where it's very commonly known that. For Chinese guys to be able to get married, they have to have a house, they have to have a car, and so because most men of a certain age are only children, then the entire family will pull all of their savings together to buy the guy a house so he can get married. Because without a house, no woman would want to, or no girl would want to marry that person. Very shins. That's Chinese pragmatism、uh, at its extreme. And in these shades of gray, they want to generate also the least amount of attention for the greatest amount of personal benefit. So I think Michael had mentioned Li Yi. So yes, they consider their personal benefit, but they also want to do that in the with the least amount of attention. That's Di Diao, low key, all right. And within the balance of extremes, the yin and yang exists the greatest harmony. Balance of extremes is how Chinese language reflects its culture. It's always nan bu nan. Is can you do? Is are you able? Is nan zai jia bu nan, nan bu nan. Xing bu xing, xing zai jia bu xing. Ah,、uh, exists the greatest amount of harmony, which is he xie. Angela, you got a question? All right, and again, I think we talked about this last time where.、Uh, Swanging, win-win. It's just in Chinese, it's a kou tou chan. It's just a word that people throw out there. Nobody really is seeking a win-win in a literal sense. All right, so that's something that if we're learning to play the China game inside the Chinese arena, we have to condition our minds when people say win-win, just ignore it. It doesn't actually mean anything. Which means what? Which means you can say it too, and not have it mean anything, right? Right? You can always say, "Yeah, we want to swing in." Perfect. Everybody can agree with that because it actually doesn't mean anything. There's no commitment to swinging. There's no accountability for swinging. There's no way to audit whether people are trying to reach a win-win. It's just something that you say at the beginning of the relationship. It's almost like "ganbei." Right, Swang Yi. All right. So, again, I'm going to go through this really quickly because I don't want to spend too much time on this. Most of it's in the book.、Um, so, you know, we're all familiar with how much Chinese people value balance and harmony, and yet we often judge their behavior as corrupt and unethical. So, one of the things that I want to do here is I wanted to look at how we translate these words and different ways to translate the words corrupt and unethical.、Um, Anybody want to give the translation a shot? 不道德 is no principles. So 贪污 is corrupt, right? Ah,、uh, 作弊 is cheat. So 贪污 is so there's a literal translation. Ah,、uh, 贪污 would be embezzle. 作弊 would be to cheat. And of course, the most common way to Do something corrupt is with home ball, right? Right? Okay. So, home ball is translated as a red packet. Okay, but we Westerners often view home ball as a bribe. All right. So, so I'm going to go through this really quickly, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Favoritism. Okay. Ren ren wei qing is the Is the translation for favoritism, okay? But favoritism, this phrase in Chinese can also be interpreted as nepotism. So two things can simultaneously be true: activities we consider corrupt improve harmony within a rigid hierarchical system, and Chinese society operates more efficiently vis-a-vis -vis its gray economy. All right, so harmony. Is translated as 和谐 but a lot of Westerners would 
translate this as collectivism. All right. Hui is the corrupt activities, often, you know, the shadow banking system in China, the whole collapse of the real estate market in China is all based on, you know, shadow banking, uh, uh, or gray income. But in the U.S., if you have gray income, sometimes we call it a side hustle. All right. So what I want everybody to look at with this, um, with this picture is look at the red words and then look at the blue words. Okay. So the red words are cheat, embezzle, bribe, nepotism, collectivism, and gray income. And the blue words are red packet, favoritism, harmony, and side hustle. And I just want you to be aware that words matter, not only to the person who's listening to you speak the words, but it matters to the thoughts that are going on in your head. So when you interpret these behaviors as cheating or embezzlement or corrupt, that's different than just thinking about things in a different way, as in a red packet or just culturally appropriate. Uh, instead of collectivism, which you know, we say we're individuals, we value individualism. So collectivism almost, almost has a bad connotation, but harmony would be better. So this is the this is what I think is where I think it's really important to, as learners of Chinese language, to understand there are always multiple ways to translate these words to have different meanings, not only to you, but the person that you're communicating with. And this is a quote from David Chang, who was formerly the China CEO of Philips China. Uh, I think I wrote it in the book. I had a chance to sit with him privately in his uh, executive office where he was giving me some advice about doing business in China. This was in 2004. And he basically said, Gene, in order to be successful in China, you need to be able to manage the different shades of gray because nothing is black or white. And he said this to me directly. And I still remember that. It just means you have to understand 中国的国情. All right? Um, 